Hi. In this video, you'll learn about computing a probability given a linear function of independent random variables. Here's the problem. Let the random variables x1 and x2 denote the length and width of a manufactured part. Assume that x1 has a normal distribution with mean 2 centimeters and standard deviation 1 centimeter, and that x2 is normally distributed with mean 5 centimeters and standard deviation 2 centimeters. Assume that x1 or x and x2 are independent. Determine the probability that the perimeter exceeds 14.5. OK, so let the random variable y, um, we're going to construct it as the perimeter um, using the random variables x1 and x2. So the perimeter is 2 times x1 plus 2 times x2, since this is the length and width of a part. And here's the perimeter formula. So we'd like to know the probability that the, the perimeter exceeds 14.5 centimeters. That's the probability that y is greater than 14.5. But in order to do this, then, we need a distribution for y. And right now, we're just given the distribution for each x. So um, you've learned in this section how to compute the expected value and the variance of a linear function of random variables. So the expected value of y is just going to be 2 times the expected value of x1 plus 2 times the expected value of x2. And we can go ahead and substitute in those values. So 2 times uh, the expected value of x1 is 2 plus 2 times the expected value of x2 is 5. So the perimeter of y, its expected value, is 14 centimeters. Now, I can also add variances of independent random variables. And we are given that x1 and x2 are independent, or else we wouldn't be able to use the following formula that I'm going to use. So variance of y, as long as I have independent variables, is going to be the constant squared times variance of x1 plus constant squared times variance of x2. And what I'm really worried about in this situation is a lot of students um, add standard deviations instead of adding variances. And this is very wrong. You do not want to do that. So um, again, and I wouldn't be able to split it up into variance of x1 plus variance of x2 uh, without having another factor um, unless these two variables, x1 and x2, are independent. So that's why I'm allowed to add these, or add these values. So this is going to be 4 times uh, the variance of x1 is 0.1 squared, because 0.1 is the standard deviation of x1, plus 4 times, uh, let me see, standard deviation of x2 is 0.2, so this will be 0.2 squared. So the total variance, then, this will be 0.04 plus 1.6 will be 0.2 centimeter squared. Now be careful, again, this is the variance. And uh, when we go to compute the following probability, we're going to use the standard deviation. So the corresponding standard deviation of y is the square root of 0.2. And this will be in centimeters then. Um, so there's one major fact, actually, I haven't talked about. Um, since x1 and x2 are normally distributed, and y is just a linear combination of those two random variables, this implies that y will also be normal. And not only now do we know it's normal, but we know its mean is 14 centimeters, and its standard deviation is the square root of 0.2 centimeters. So to find the probability um, now that y, the perimeter is greater than 14.5 centimeters. Um, since y is normal, I'm just going to find a z-score and then use um, a cumulative distribution table for a normal to compute the uh, probability of, being, of y being bigger than 14.5. So I'm going to convert this to a standard normal to do that. And where z is a standard normal random variable, I take 14.5, I subtract off the mean of the distribution of y, and I divide by its standard deviation. 
So this is going to give me the probability that z, where again z is a normal 0, 1 uh, distribution, is greater than uh, 1.12. And if I go to a z table um, or a normal cumulative distribution table, I can uh, determine the probability z is greater than 1.12 from that table, and I get it to be um, 0.13, and that is the final probability. So we did a couple of very important steps in this. Uh, y is just a linear combination of two random variables, x1 and x2. Um, I can find the expected value of y by taking a linear combination of the expected values of x. And we did that. Um, the variance of y then, because there's a constant, the constant comes out squared in front of the variance term. So it's going to be four or two squared times the variance of x1 plus two squared times the variance of x2. I'm allowed to add these variances uh, without worry because x and y are independent random variables. If they weren't, I would not allow to be able to make this calculation here. Um, also, in this problem, I got the variance, and if we're going to do something, uh, especially with a normal probability, we probably need the standard deviation rather than the variance. So the standard deviation, again, is just the square root of the variance. And finally, uh, y turned out to be a normally distributed random variable because x1 and x2 were both normally distributed. So I hope this has helped. I think this is a nice example of a linear combination of random variables and that you're allowed to, again, if you have a linear combination, you can add means and you can add variances if you have independence of those two random variables or however many there may be. So um, independence important and uh, sum of normals will always turn out to be a normal distribution. So uh, again, I think this was a nice practice and you've got to see uh, a nice example of a linear combination.